Here we go, Jesse, and we're live again. All right, let's do this. What did we do 30 years ago when we couldn't upload this stuff in two minutes or even have a PowerPoint or a computer screen? I know, right? I was thinking about that the other day, actually, how, how far we've come with technology. It wasn't that long ago. I remember my grandfather telling me stories. So he was born 1908. And this is just the last century. He was delivering milk in glass bottles by horse and buggy in Ottawa. That was one of his jobs, delivering milk with ice blocks by horse and buggy. This is just two generations ago. Yeah, it's really not that long ago. People can't fathom not having their files downloaded in two minutes. So this week's guest, I, I believe he was on... He was on trying to get onto the webinar an hour ago. He's currently in Indonesia, so we're hoping he can come back on. But we'll go through the formalities. Hopefully, Sua Tron can come back on. He's a commercial financing expert. He's been in the mortgage industry for over a decade. He's created a commercial lending course for mortgage brokers that are interested in getting into the commercial side. Uh, that course is ongoing. He runs it every month. And hopefully, uh, Sua gets back in touch with us. I know it's very late there in Indonesia. I believe it's past midnight. So he may have uh, faded off into uh, mortgage land. If that's uh, if that's a term that we could use, mortgage land. Okay, so our agenda, Jesse, is every week. Uh, what are we going to learn today? Hopefully, Sua comes on. If not, on the replay, we'll have Sua's uh, interview. We'll get that interview with him injected here into the video and uh, learn about commercial financing. You know, where to go, how to get it set up, what kind of licensing, if there's additional licensing required. For mortgage brokers, you're going to be able to ask Sue all the questions. Then uh, before we get into everything, you're going to learn a little bit about Mr. Taxes and the Dollar Tax Club and Jesse with Next Level Marketing and some of the changes that are going on over there. And of course, every week we have our tax tip, jokes, a little bit of motivation uh, with a quote or two, and then a fun weekly poll. And then we'll dive right into uh, Sua. Hopefully, hopefully Jesse comes back on. I've known Sua for a long time. He's well respected in the industry and does big numbers on the commercial financing side. So brokers that are interested in this, uh, stay tuned and uh, hopefully you'll pick up some things. So this is webinar number 14 this year. Number 14 reminds me of the old Montreal Canadiens. Mario Tremblay was number 14 when the Habs won their five consecutive Stanley Cups. Any any number 14s resonate with you, Jess? I, not really, no. 14, I guess, was the number of my football jersey when I was playing football in high school. I there guess. you go. We lost a lot, but, uh, you know, it was still fun. I remember one year in Bantam hockey, we didn't win a game. The next year, we won the provincial championship. So we went from not winning a game, and we played a, a girls' team. So this is in the 1970s. They did have a girls' hockey team, and we lost to them. Talk about no a, a crushing your morale. Yeah, there's no shame in that. No shame in that. I, I believe they were a, a year older. They were a midget girls' hockey team. And hockey wasn't big for women back then, but it, it's big now. And Canada's won the uh, gold medal past couple of years in women's hockey, so they're dominating the world. Yeah, and awesome. uh, I remember a, a girl that used to play on the outdoor rink with us. Her name was Sue Fauchier. So if anybody knows that name back in Ottawa, uh, it'd be interesting to see where she's at now. She'd be around our age, you know, early to mid-50s. Sue Fauché leading uh, the women's charge way back when in uh, women's hockey. So our trademark, uh, just to date ourselves a little more, goes back to 1984, right out of high school. Started doing income tax, did a deal on Dragon's Den in 2012 with Jim Treleving, uh, inked that deal, and then uh, opted out of the deal about eight months later. A little bit too much due diligence for our liking. Uh, ended up with a new partner, helped grow the the new partner, helped grow the business to uh, 42 offices with 350 plus team, 25,000 plus clients. We sold out in late 2015. Uh, the new owners didn't want to take the brand, so we managed to keep the brand. So there is a lot of value in brands. And we were just interviewed on a podcast uh, with a brand expert uh, talking about our brand and the history and how we managed to hang on to it and keep it. I guess the way we managed to hang on and, and keep it was we asked a big price tag for it. So they wanted the clients, but didn't want the big price tag for the brand, thought they could do it on their own and they're still thriving. They they grew to about 240 locations and then they've shrunk back down now, just focusing on payday loans and pawn, pawn shops. That is it, Cash Canada. 
a new type of bank was their their motto and that's it for us jesse jesse got a big slide here with lots of accolades so let him have it i really liked what you just told me i I didn't know some of that stuff that you i learned a little bit so thank you i've been online entrepreneur since 2016 uh focused primarily on digital marketing putting systems and processes together to help automate businesses my passion is truly just helping people bring their visions to life and just being a part of that process. I've been recognized as number one in sales for three different global companies. I've built and led teams of thousands of people through my career. I've built many different training courses and helped many other people build training courses and just putting those systems together to automate it. Lately, I've been doing a lot of coaching and consulting and now officially helping with the insurance side at the Dollar Tax Club, as well as managing back end of the Dollar Tax Club, all of the uh, technology side of things so if our special guest is not able to make it in time we've got a backup plan to kind of walk through a little bit of how that back-end process works here for you guys today yeah so that's the affiliate program that jesse helped put together with nextlevelcommunity.com uh, uh jesse's been working with us uh help take over from aaron fraser at diamond movement uh, these guys can't afford vowels they need to talk to vanna white but this thing's up and running jesse we're close to 100 affiliates now a lot of them mortgage brokers so we do have an affiliate program for mortgage brokers if anybody's interested in that affiliate program to find out how bro- Brokers can drive more clients into their business. Just reach out to us, drop a message in the chat area and somebody will grab your info and we'll reach out a bit later. So Jesse, on on the funnel side, maybe explain a little bit to listeners what a marketing funnel is, just in layman's terms. So I mean, a marketing funnel in its simplest form is anyone who's watching this right now, just think back to a time when maybe you've seen an ad on Facebook or you've seen something out there, an ad on Google or TikTok or Instagram or wherever. And it it intrigued you enough to click on whatever link that they had, right? Most likely nine times out of 10, you'll end up on a website that that essentially asks for you to trade your name and email in in trade for information or a product, right? Um, So that's the start of the sales funnel. And so what happens from that point forward is the reason they call it a funnel is because it's usually, you know, if you think about it, a lot of people come in through the top, but as the process gets deeper and deeper, as you go through the pages and go through the step, less and less people will go all the way through. Um, so that's why it's you know, shaped like a funnel. If you think about it from the perspective of the amount of people starting at the top, working their way through the step. And so a funnel is essentially a series of websites uh, designed in a specific way to gather a little bit of information as well to provide information and provide value or a service or products or whatever and then in return you know people will go through these pro- this process and and maybe they'll buy something maybe they won't but um it's purposely designed to just be a series of websites essentially that are strategically put together and we've created the front end of that funnel for mortgage brokers. So we have a, a few hooks that mortgage brokers can use. We create those ads for mortgage brokers uh, using our services as, uh, you know, the lead generation. Uh, clients come into us if they're not a if they're not working with a mortgage broker and, and you're working with us on the affiliate program as a mortgage broker, then uh, what we'll do is uh, refer those clients back to you for your process, which is most likely a mortgage review. Hopefully their mortgage is renewing within the sec- next, next six months. Otherwise you put them into your CRM and uh, you start building your list of potential clients. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. So Sua, who uh, still hasn't reached back to us he's in in indonesia right now so it's midnight there he i i think he was mistaken the webinar was at 8 a.m so we'll re-record this introduction for sua record his training his introduction to his training a little bit about his history his commercial commercial financing program and i know that alicia who's working or sorry matthew and or alicia in the back end as a moderator today there is an email uh with that link for sua's course so if you're interested at all in commercial financing as a broker, uh, reach out, reach out to uh, Sua. His link is going to be right here, commercialfinancingmastery.com. Sua, man, we hunted you down in Indonesia. Thanks for getting on the webinar. We had a, a little bit of trouble tracking you down live. There was some timing issues, et cetera, but we're recording this one after the fact. We'll get it on. So you'll be watching it live on the webinar replay. But here we are, commercial financing mastery. So Sua, 
How far back does our history go? I know it goes back to 2006 with Mortgage's Lab, dude. Uh, yeah. Pablo, Pablo Espanol guy. I think even further, way back when you guys were down at the, uh, the place where Dan Locke was doing his presentation. Yeah, but Dan I, did, Locke. I didn't really know. I didn't really know you back then. <laughs> That's all right. So we've all progressed a little bit. So you've been, you know, just give our, our viewers a little bit of background, how long you've been in the industry, how you progressed to where you are today. And then we'll jump into your commercial financing mastery course, which is, I'm sure, why most of the brokers are tuning in today to learn the inside secrets from the pro. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, I'll share I'll share some gold nuggets for sure. Yeah, I, I've been doing commercial financing way back when I was with uh, a former retail bank, uh, you know, all red, right? And uh, I was there for a decade, but you know what? Loyalty doesn't pay there. And you can't really be a true advisor when you're working with a bank because they kind of put you on a leash and you'd be held liable if you advise the, uh, the client uh, anything that the bank doesn't want you to advise, right? Well, uh, everybody that, gets the best rate the bank wants to offer, right? Not necessarily, but it's... I know, uh, it's, I know that. You know, it's, it's, it's all commission-driven too. So, you know, commercial account managers uh, like myself and even small business banker uh, and mobile market specialists, they're all commission-driven. So if you're the least profitable employee they have, they're not going to have you around for much longer, right? So there is a... Catch 22 there. They want you want the best lowest rate, but also my employer wants the highest profitability for me to be, you know, to to, to keep me as a good employee, right? to give me all those rewards and bonuses that I that I need to hit, right? So when when did you make the transition out onto your own? What was the final straw? What was the straw that broke Suatrong's back? Well, I was I was actually very loyal to my I call her my manager, but she's actually the, re the regional sales manager of the whole entire area, the region, and we were given a very loose rein to do what we want as long as we hit our numbers, right? So. I loved independence, but when she got laid off and they gave her like an early severance, it's like, oh my God, just a few years short of her golden, you know, golden watch kind of thing. And she's been there for over 30 years, which is all her life. I was like, I was shocked. I was like, that's loyalty? Jeez, Murphy, right? They leave, they let you off a few years before you hit your final, you know, the final amount. She would like, she would have a great retirement, I tell you. But because she didn't hit it, she won't get it. Yeah, you can right. spend your whole life building somebody else's dream or spend a couple of years building your own. And that, so, that, that's what I decided. That when, when she left and they gave me an option to either downsize the college, to either do that or move sideways to another location and do, do more work with the same pay. So I chose exit back in 2010. More work with the same pay? That's an appealing option, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A lot more administrative work too. So I said, that's not for me. I'm a hunter. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a farmer. I don't sit down. I don't sit and wait, right? So wow. a lot like we've done, we put together a tax course. So it's a little bit of lead generation for us, half the people that come through the tax course, really those who just want to do it themselves. But for brokers that are out there listening, what is it that they want to achieve by taking this course or getting involved with you in, in taking the course? Well, first of all, I always ask them, it's like the reason why you want to do this. I always ask them like, okay, are you, you know, there's third, so let's go back. There's 36,000 brokers across Canada, right? And a lot of them are happy doing residential. Right? You, know, we, you know, they have a, got a lot of relationship with realtors and stuff, so they don't have to chase after a lot of clients, right? But for the folks that I question, like, why are you doing the same thing that everybody else is doing? There's the literally 98% of the people out there in, in, in the brokerage world are doing residential financing. Why? Because it's easy, all right? Any, any grade 11 can graduate from high school to do this. Right? It's a low level entry. So I asked them, you know, there, there is the other 2 to 3% that, that do, does strictly what I do, commercial financing. Because no one else is doing it. It's too damn hard. All right. Nobody's teaching. There's no support level. There's like there's a whole bunch of stuff. That, and, and I'll go into that later. But the question you need to ask you uh, yourself is if you're a broker and you, you feel like you're chasing your tail, you might want to consider doing something different. Like maybe leave it's, the industry together or else have a probably look at it. Because wow. you are chasing your tail. Literally. Yeah. A lot of them do. They're just chasing. And then, uh, you know, I, I know the industry superficially because we are the national service provider for biologics now. So we yeah. work with a lot of brokers, but I hear a lot of them, you know, losing deals on refinancing, you know, the renewals, uh, yeah. banks are sealing people back. So you put all that work in, it's the same with us on the tax side, very low margins on the tax side. We have to do a high volume, but clients jump around based on saving 10 or 20 or 30 bucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous because they're, they're those are the low hanging fruits, I call them, right? Like what everybody's doing that. You're, you're chasing, you can't offer your 
You cannot offer your client says we offer the best service and the best rate. Well, that's expected. Everybody says that. That should go without saying. Yeah, right. So it's like you can't go out and preach that because every everybody else is doing the same thing that you you're doing. It's like guaranteeing accuracy on your tax return. Well, nobody would expect expect anything less. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So let's, uh, I know a lot of people are anxious here to jump in and see what, you know, what's hiding behind the the initial screen here. But I know you're going to dive a little bit into the course, give them some options, but, you know, grab your notepad, your paper, try and enjoy the Sue's presentation. I've been through it. I believe twice before at presentations that you've done, Sua. So oh, I, I made, I made it a little, little bit different this time around. So hopefully wow. it'll be more useful. Yeah. Special for the uh, side hustle for your side hustle webinar here. <laughs> awesome. Sure. Okay, sure, I'm going to mute. We'll keep an eye on questions here coming in on the gallery. And uh, any important questions, we'll queue them up for I mean, we, 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 you don't have to stay mute, Rob. Robert, we can talk and chat about this. It's more like an open session. So the, the one thing I like to ask is, you know, wh- why don't brokers do commercial financing? And I'm sure you, Robert, you see so many thousands and thousands of doing the repeat same thing and like taking the tail like you mentioned earlier, right? But I think the biggest concern that a lot of mortgage brokers don't jump into commercial financing is fear, right? Literally. And I call it fear, F-E-A-R, it's, you know, false expectation appearing real right? They're, they're afraid of everything. I mean, first of all, because there is, there's lack of support, right? There's no support, no training whatsoever in the, inside the residential market right now, a broker town to teach, right? And everybody else is, is pushing towards only res- doing residential deals, only doing residential deals, right? And I would say why? You know what it is? It's controlling your income, right? Because they make they they set a ceiling, they set an X amount, either 60, 75, or 85, or some, you know, 110 basis point to, to keep you there, to control the level of income you can make, right, per client. Does that make sense? Is that you, Robert? Like, it's like, you can chase after all the, you know, the, 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 the regular T4 guys to do taxes, but then there's no value in that, right? I'm going to give you an example. I just pulled one off here. This actually literally just came into my office because we have to file these on a separate computer. We have six full-time staff now processing documents. So last month, wow. we did 34,000 plus documents through the Phylogics portal. This is the first one that has come in for a copy of a corporate assessment. I folded it over here to hide the <laughs> client's details, but that's a, uh, a business consent form. 34,000 documents, and this is the first one that's first come time. in in about a month and a half. So somebody's doing some commercial financing, but most yep. of the commercial finance guys you know, have a, an account they work with. So, you know, to give people the benefit of the doubt, you know, very few come through us for these documents, but just to give you the sheer magnitude of residential versus commercial. That's right. That, that's 34, not literally. documents. That's the first one that's come through in about a month. Yeah, literally nobody's doing it. I mean, this it's kind of shocking. Do people buy commercial property? All the time, every day, literally. Well, I'm going to tell people it. right now listening, you know, either follow up on Sue's offer here at the end, or he doesn't mind taking all the commercial deals himself. So the question <laughs> is, how many do you want as a broker? And are you going to, you know, take a sneak peek at the course or, or you know, at least give it a, a test drive. The two percent is going to three percent, right? And uh, you know what? I've trained 130 residential brokers across Canada right, in the last five years, and I and I train a select few. It's not every, it's not for everybody. And I you go through the uh, interviewing process when they come when they come to me to see if it, you know, to see whether this is what they're looking for. Because a lot of times I don't want them to spend five thousand on a workshop, and it becomes in not 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 shelf self-help and become shelf help right it's stuck on the shelf do nothing collecting dust they just waste money right I'm, I'm not in the business to help them do that i'm not in the business to help them change their life and change their business so what, the way what about somebody do. that's listening to and they, they they got their mind set on residential uh but they they end up coming across a couple of deals for commercial that, is that something that you will call broker with them yeah i i can help you know there's 130 of my graduates that i can help as, as well across canada literally all the way to newfoundland right so i've trained every every province so far. And so the reason why a lot of mortgage brokers don't really jump to commercial finance, I fear, is the myth out there. The myth that it takes too long, it, 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 it takes too long and clients don't pay, clients shop around anyway. So why waste all your time doing that? Well, it, it is a bold face lie because the people that are saying that are usually the ones that don't want you to get involved in commercial financing. It's, all, it's almost the same amount of work for the tax documents 
on it the is. commercial side as it is on the residential side. We know because we do both, but yeah. very small numbers come through on the commercial side because most are working with an account. Most people in business have a good track on their financials. You know, they're yeah. on top of that, where most people in residential, like I said, last month, 34,000 document orders through Phylogix. Wow, that's an incredible amount. <laughs> yeah, they're doing, you know, they, they do upwards of 500,000 mortgages a year. So that's almost 60, 70% of their, the mortgages that go through cannot find their documents. Yeah. And you know what? And the T1 and the T2, it's really not much different other than, you know, the business for self section. It's just translated differently, right? They're both, they're both grade three math. Adding, subtracting, <laughs> multiplying, dividing. It's just the pages look a, a little different. Bottom yeah, line is the government, the government wants to see that bottom line to see how much tax they can get out of you. That's about it. And, you know, just like you said, Robert, it, it's not really hard math to understand. And that's what it, it is about when you look into uh, understanding the financial stuff on a business. And, you know, I go into detail, teach them how to, how to pull numbers out and to be able to use the numbers that we need to make to make the lenders give us an approval, right? I teach about that. You know, like EBITDA, for example, right? And cap rate and all that. I go into the workshop and go into details how do you figure out, right? Some are familiar with it already. I mean, honestly, if you're doing private hey, we're, deals- we're looking for extra help here this time of year. You want to moonlight? You want to fly back and give us a hand? There you go. <laughs> you know enough about financials, you could probably uh, get you in for a few hours a week. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet you you overly swamp, right? Because of yeah. all tax season. So, I mean, what have you? I mean, what do you have on your hand, right? What have you got? If, if you're already dealing with a lot of fix and flipper, if you're dealing with a lot of uh, not first home buyer, if you're only dealing with first home buyer, this is not for you. This workshop is not for you, okay? Stay where you are until until you had enough. If you're like me and, and if you had enough with first home buyers ask you, oh, the realtor didn't tell me that. Do I need to get this? Do I need to get that? Do I need to get this? And if you're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to explain this again, then this might be for you, right? Because you deal with investors, they don't ask that. You usually say, hey, sign here so I can get to Rob and Rob can pull some stuff for me. I need from the database and CRA. Boom. They don't question you. They don't say why. <laughs> they expect it. Right, Rob? They work, they work with professionals all the time. So it's, yeah. it's, it's an expectation. They know it, what's coming. Yeah. yeah. And, and do they know you're going to work for free? Does any business owner know anybody else work for free? No. They expect to pay a fee, right? Not like first home buyers. You ask them for a fee, they say, what? But I thought you guys work for free. I thought the bank pays you, right? So the myth that people don't believe in paying commercial financing guy, like mortgage brokers, a fee is wrong. All right? They're making bundles and I'll show you some of my students later. They're making money, right? The potential, really, I, I say the sky, the, the sky isn't the ceiling, right? You can make as much as you want with as little client as you want because my numbers dropped down between 2016 and 2021, right? In those years, my numbers of, of residential clients went from, uh, I would say, 100 odd clients down to 60, now down to like nothing. Right? At one time, I dropped from 85 clients down to 50 clients. I have one of my last webinars. I, I, I I, I go through the uh, the numbers, right? When when a residential broker drops a client from 85 per year down to 62, what do you think your income looks like, Robert? Yeah, you know, that's about 80% income or 20% <laughs> drop. All right, that, that is a significant drop. You, if, you, if you're making six figure, you just lost an easy 25 grand, 20, 25, right? But my numbers went up, right? My numbers went up almost 52% in the same amount of time. I know they do because we do your numbers and so I can vouch <laughs> for it. But, but on top of that, you're spending half your time over overseas now, you know, relaxing a, a big part of the year, starting to wind down closer to retirement. I mean, the, the potential is there to do that, right? Uh, a residential, you have to chase after the clients all the time. Whereas commercial, you never see them. They're busy doing their job. They're busy doing their, you know, their, their business. Their hustle. Uh, yeah, their hustle. They don't. You want to meet on Zoom? Oh, that's awesome, So I don't have to go down to the office. That's even better. And they're not right? even in the office half the time. A lot of our, our what, what I call our commercial clients are corporate owners. They're just on their way to a meeting and they get on a quick Zoom call for five, 10 minutes between meetings, give you the information they need and they're done. Whereas that's we it. have clients that are, you know, they just have a, a T4 with a side part-time job and the, it takes them three weeks to get a copy of their <laughs> T4. Yeah, it's very different. I mean, and, and the time that you meet them to is very, very flexible. They're not like, oh, I can only meet you after five. If they're an employee, right? They only meet you after the work, right? And all your work is bunched into the evenings and bunched into the weekend, which I hate it because I want to family time. I wanted my travel time. I want my freedom. I know. I, know. I remember the scene from Boiler Room where I, I think it was Ben Affleck said, hey, if you're looking for a vacation time, go teach third grade public school. That's, oh. uh, it's true. There's some people are, are, you know, they just want the J-O-B stands for yep. just over broke. And some people are willing to hustle. And mortgage brokers, you're already hustling anyway. 
Just a, yeah. a little additional hustle to get the commercial side going. And that's what Sue is explaining today. For those who are just tuning in, his commercial financing course, we're talking about it here, getting the inside scoop, finding out the benefits, the features. Yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Like after the six-week course that I teach is over, I'm, I, I don't just leave abandon you. You know, for the first deal, I take, I help you from A to Z to get the deal done. And we have our own, we have our own private group that we share, openly share contacts and openly help we restructure some deals. So if you have a problem, you share it inside of, private group and we openly help each other. I have 130 you know, graduates across from every franchise, literally. Like there's, there's not a franchise that hasn't taken my workshop. Right? Uh, the last broker owner, I trained six, six, six of her employees. It's crazy. Excellent. Right? So, you know, they spend a fortune with me on that on, on that group alone, right? But if, if she's willing to spend the money, I know she doesn't get 10 times back in the next you know year too because so somebody that is money. watching somebody who's a brokerage owner you know what what type of people would they look to in their brokerage to hand pick if they were going to pay for the course the underwriter because those underwriters are really they're not making enough money on those residential deals right and and when they and then when they one day they get tired of those of the current type of files which is like in and out in and out every day is the same hey there is some people who love it but then there are one who say oh you know i'm not I'm not growing. Like I'm not using my brain. It just becomes mush. That was, that was my first year as an accountant in uh, accounts payable. And I got 600 invoices a week and I worked my yep. butt off that first week. And the next week they brought in another 600 invoices <laughs> to code. Like I got to do this for the next 30 years. Come yeah. On. Yeah. Right. No growth there. So with commercial financing, with underwriter already have a third of the skill set, right? They're just not being used, utilized. So what I teach them is on a commercial finance side is how to use that and expand from what they currently have. Right. Uh, most most people don't just look at the simple ad back from the the T the, well, the T1 general right with no self employed kind of income right but they don't realize that that can be take, that can be expanded and grow if you have to we have to deal with a T2 corporate right then that's when the the fun stuff comes in they actually get to use the noodles more huh? can I add this back is this is this permitted what what is permitted what isn't and I go through that in my workshop right and. And a lot of it is justification. Is it a one-time expense or is it a continuing expense? Is it indirectly related to the job or not directly related, right? So there's stuff that you can and cannot, even if one-time expenses, right? And it goes all, all that stuff. So. What do we have here? Why and potential? So the potential, let's look at the, the potential for somebody who's, let's say, doing 20 million a year in residential, which is one house in West Vancouver. But you know, somebody making 25, <laughs> somebody starting out making 25, 30,000, they're, they're highly intelligent. They know the system inside out. What, what's the upside for them, the potential? Well, uh, one of my early graduates was a girl named, no a girl, a girl named Noel Murdoch. And she was from Edmonton. She flew in. That's what she was making, around twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on her. That was her second year when she came to me. And I was kind of hesitant, but because I, I usually say, you got to be in it around two to three years to like, you know, slit your wrist a few times to say, okay, enough is enough. I want to change, right? I help those people who want to change. I can't help you if you don't want to change, right? You just come in to expect, uh, expect um, uh, the golden grail. It doesn't work. But the potential is this. So she went back and helped her existing uh, builder developer who wanted to make a change. He wanted to build some commercial component instead of doing uh, townhouses to sell in Edmonton because it wasn't really, the market wasn't really good for residential, but you know, a few years ago. Uh, so he decided to ship commercial building warehouses. She, she needed to get up to speed really fast to be able to finance his project, right? Uh, long story short, she came back to me about six months after. She said, Sue, I've been busy. I have not been active in, in, in the group. And this is the reason why. And she goes, man, I helped the, the building developer get the financing for the land and to build out these warehouses to sell. That file alone, she made more than, than her last year income. So I won't tell you how much, but she said she was she was making more money in that one deal, helping with that one developer than she was doing uh, in her previous job as an ambulance driver. If that doesn't change her life, I don't know what does, right? And that free up more time because she was a single mom. She has two kids, right? So that was cool. Uh, the coolest stuff that I... I got out of this was that she went on to add an advisor role with a builder developer. And when the, the units were, were completed, she was the pre-approval financing for the takeout mortgage for someone who was buying those individual units. It was amazing. Like none of my other students were this creative, right? And that builder developer kept her for life because she helped him redesign the brand, 
the website. I mean, that goes a step beyond, right? But if, but if you're creative, that's your creative mind that you use, right? She didn't build the website. She got somebody else in. And she said, we need to have this. We need to have about your, your information about you. Because you know what? Builder developers, sometimes if they're if they're just like the small ones who, who just about to grow into the big time, big league, they don't have time for that. They're just chasing after the next deal, after the connect, after the next project, right? So it was great. He handed everything to her. You want to know loyalty is? That's loyalty. Hey, he's not going nowhere. And, and does she have to chase after another? Another, another bone anymore that's a big juicy bone right and guess who those developer and builders know other builders and developers other builders and developers so she became you know? a one-stop shop for that developer he doesn't have to go around arrange with the bank to have somebody come in and set up their signage she was willing to take care of the whole cycle yep. from start to finish to that's right and, and and you know what builders developers they know what they're good at and what they're not good at and they know value see that's the difference between the residential mortgages right a lot of our clients expect. they don't see value when they expect right and that's the uh, i think that's what's wrong with this world right too many people are too entitled because the media has trained them that way, right? Whereas business owners, we know we're not going to spend time chasing the bank and chasing negotiation and chasing the paper and chasing the documents and chasing the appraisers. You do that. We're going to go build the next project. You help finance, right? And builders it's a right build. Yeah. It's I know a I started off. I started off my working career framing houses. Mm. So I know the industry. We just, we just want to build. Just yeah, want to bang, get bang, it, bang. Go to the next one. Bang, get bang, bang, bang. Out, get the next foundation poured and start on the next one. In Ontario, before the snow came, that was the hurry. That's it. In, get, in it get it boxed in before too. the snow comes and then you can work all winter inside. Well, that's what she does, by the way. She does it in the winter's time, right? You know, when everybody else is like, having a hard time finding clients, she's working on that deal. Ready for the spring fall to start building, right? Nice. So what's the potential? Another another, uh, another graduate of mine, right? His name is Tim. Tim Osborne. He's, he's a big help helper in, in, inside the I Love Mortgage Brokering uh, group. And uh, when he came to me, he was in, in, in a small town. He, he still is in a small town, by the way, right? And uh, a Salmon Arms area kind of thing in the in interior. So he's going, man, my mortgages are so small. I got to work three, four times more from you guys in Vancouver to make the same amount of commission on a one deal, right? Uh, so when he came to me, he said, so I just need a, a better way to make more money, <laughs> so, right? Um, so when he, when he came to me, he was, he was very open. And, and I said, you know what, Tim, nobody have graduated from my workshop at that time is in the interior, Kelowna, Kamloops, but my investors are going up there. Terrace Kinnaman, nobody else is doing it. And I said, you are a lucky guy because my investors, when I, they go up there, I'm not going to go up there. I'm going to send it to you, send them to you. And same thing with every uh, everybody else, right? So make a long story short for him, Tim, within six months too, I told him, no, no, within six months, four months, three months, when his franchise, he's in a smaller franchise. So when his franchise found out he was doing commercial deals and, 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 and educating the other brokers in, in his own franchise about how commercial finance works, and they sent him a ton of deals. They approached him and said, Tim, would you want to take on as a lead, the, the lead desk for commercial financing for our franchise, right? So he went from, Three months before not knowing commercial financing to, to taking on the lead desk on the commercial financing for the franchise. Right? From the day onward, from that day onward, guess how much business he had to go to hunt for commercial financing deals out there. I know I'm just being facetious, right? Nothing. He doesn't need to hunt, he doesn't need to go out hunting for, for new deals. He's getting a ton to refer for inside the franchise now, right? Such as you know, Dominion Landing, you know, and and uh a vehicle and uh, a market alliance, all that stuff, they have a head office of this commercial financing, but they're inundated too. They're swamp, right? So if you if you are in a broker owner office that have a huge team, 40, 50 people, heck, even 20 people, look how many deals you can get from those inside the inside your office alone. You don't need to go hunting, all right? You're slaying there. I, a matter of fact, when I was working some in my office of, of 43, right? 43 brokers in the office, guess how many was doing commercial deals in there that knows how to do commercial deals? Yeah, the other guy and me. That was it. So out of between 43 of us, we were getting a lot of deals already. We didn't need to ever hunt at all. Because one broker will eventually come across one commercial deal in any given six months even. I'll wager to say out of the 40 brokers, you know, 41 there, 40 brokers, there's probably easy 40 deals that just never touch because they didn't care. Nobody, they, they didn't want it. They, you know, they don't have to seek them out. They turn them away. Oh, just go to your bank. And this is why I'm passionate. And this is why I'm actually doing the, the course, why I'm teaching, right? It's like, I get so sick and tired of hearing, you know, brokers. Like when I was inside the broker, 
we we tell our clients we are the go-to financing expert. But then when somebody wants to expand and grow their business, wants to buy the warehouse, wants to buy an office, we say, uh, 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 I don't know, go back to your bank. Hello. Did you just say you were like the go-to financing person? What happened? Oh, because I don't know commercial finance. Well, that's not an excuse, is it? All right. So I get upset. Sorry, but just what being passionate. Yeah, anyway, you, you get you get passionate. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is this is another broker owner, okay? Uh, who recently finished in 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 December uh, of the workshop. And when he came to me, he, you know, he, he was like, "Sue, I'm not sure, but you know, I'm the broker, and I'm hiring a ton of people. I see them turn away commercial deal all the time, all right?" So Michael Warmly, Warmly, right? He says the six. Hey, you you read this? Can you read it, Robert? Yeah, the six weeks spent with Sua was an investment in creating the best possible experience for our commercial clients. He encourages out of the box strategy. I walked away with more confidence to approach lenders, knowing they are receiving a well packaged risk assessment of each opportunity. As brokers, we never stop learning and always look for new ways to evaluate the options best suited for our clients. SUA's course is a tool in our kit that will be used for many years to come. That is your paid public service announcement by mrtaxes.ca. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's and, it, Michael you know, Warnby. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, he's an owner. He understands that, right? He knows we're leaving so much on the table. It's like, oh, you're a business owner. And that was it at the end of the discussion, right? It's that like, you're a business owner. Oh, how's your business? Are you expanding? Have you thought about moving out of your house? Have you thought about acquiring an office building and bringing I'm gonna in your I'm going to make a, an analogy here. So uh, the you know, commercial mortgage side to traditional mortgage brokering is similar to a lot of students coming into us that work on the personal tax side. Very quick learning curve becomes very yes. boring. And yes. then they say, how do we then now do learn uh, corporate tax, T2s, yep. you know, small business returns, taking that next step. More money, it, more value. More money, more value. But you're also working with more educated clients, yes. clients that have their paperwork in order. Like I you're said, not chasing, the you're not chasing them paperwork. <laughs> oh, the joy yeah. of our life. Yeah. And, and, you, and you see them grow and you can help even more, right? Help them with projections, help them with added value outside of the, outside of the accounting toolbox that they need help with. Well, in the right? business side, you see them go to the next stage. It's just like a homeowner seeing them grow. You know, they have kids, they need a bigger home, they need more financing, then they start their own business, they need commercial property. You see that evolution with the clients. Yep. And it doesn't stop there. See, you spent the 5K on my workshop. Warby is saying, you know, Michael is saying, that's 25K I can make back in the next six months, five to six months, right? It's years and you get better and better, right? And you get bigger and bigger deals. That's, that's the, the future. That's the potential. Work with the smaller deals at the beginning, co-broker the bigger deals with me. So that's the other selfish reason. If you're asking why Sue is teaching this and creating competition, I'm not. I'm bringing more bigger deals into the into the broker town because now there's more awareness that we can do this, right? You're telling, see, when I was with that, oh, I mean, oops. Well, I, I'm, I'm not with them anymore anyway, so it's too late. Yeah, <laughs> when we, I was we, we, will, we will make sure and beep that out. <laughs> so I was, I was not allowed to ask them, I'm not allowed to push them, not allowed to advise them, say, Hey, would you, are you going to grow? Would you want to take some leasing? Have you thought about leasing your equipment instead of buying outright? I, you know, I'm, I, you can't take on those risks and liability by suggesting that the owner to do that. When you're an individual, an independent guy like me as a commercial financing expert, we can tell them, hey, why are you buying the car and a cheap car? Why don't you lease a new one? And he says, why? Talk to the accountant, talk to Robert. He'll, he'll give you reason, another reason why, right? And then when they see that, that makes sense. And also frees up more money to do what? Oh, the equipment, your old equipment, time to get rid of it. Let's lease a new one because now you have cash flow, right? You have money in the war chest. So let's do more. Now the business can be expanded and grow further and faster. Is there risk? Oh yeah, there's a lot more risk. But as a business owner, they understand that already, right? But with the capital, it's a calculated risk they have, right? And that's what we're here for. We're, we're, we're here to give them advice. When I was an employee at the bank, it's not my incentive to give them advice. That can cost me if I lose my job, right? So it was not, it was a disincentive for me to work at the it's bank. It's like being an employee for Canada Revenue. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, allowed, <laughs> I'm allowed to mention Canada Revenue. There you go. So, I mean, what will I learn? Other than the fundamentals, like everything already from A to Z, right? Uh, so the one thing that you need to know is, as any broker, really, when, when, when you have a deal in front of you, uh, you're paid to get the deal done. You, you know, you just say, usually the client says, when am I, I going to get my money? Like, 
when, when do we get an approval? Literally, right? So my, my thing is that I teach not just fundamentals. Yeah, we're, we're pouring concrete in three weeks. We need we need money. Yeah. yeah. No pressure. No pressure. I think why a lot of brokers don't like the commercial financing because they, they have this misunderstanding that it takes a lot of time. It really isn't. Once you understand one plus one equals two, right? Once you understand A, B, C, all right? <clears throat> I teach you how to walk before you start running. So once you got that, then it'd be faster and faster. But, you know, you can quickly analyze a deal. I have templates, spreadsheets, everything up the year yang after the you know a decade worth of uh of acquiring all this knowledge and all these extra tools right i provide all of that included right so you don't start from scratch so you can punch in the numbers and the spreadsheet will quickly analyze the deal for you what's missing what's how much can you finance literally like it's not even a pre-approval. I can, I would say 90% guarantee that this is the maximum they will get. And, you know, of course, there's a discretion. We can, we can argue, we can try to get more out of for them. But on the surface, within five minutes, you can tell whether that deal is good or bad, right? Well, you can tell the client, yeah, this is not going to work, right? And let them go away. Then you can spend some of your time on your residential deal. That's easy to do, get it done, right? But, but at least you're not wasting a lot of precious time, right? That's what most resident broker are worried about when they look at commercial financing is, am I going to waste my time and get nothing, right? No, the tools will be there to shorten that time frame for you. And what's the other thing, right? What is the other thing that we worry about? We got this deal. It looks good. I feel it's good. But is the lender looking at the same, with the same microscope, uh, magnifying glass that you are? Probably not, right? You look at it from a potential, this is a good deal. But most lenders don't and underwriters are even different, right? So how do you know? And I teach you how to position the file. And if there's any bumps in it, how to pave it over. So that way, if there's any issues, it's going to be resolved before the appraisal gets there. Before, right? You send it in to commercial account managers to get an approval. Right? If you send it in, all the mistakes are on there. The chance you approve it is not just 50-50. You know, I see this very often. A lot of residential broke come to me and say, so I got burnt on a couple of deals. I said, no, you didn't. You burnt your client, right? You're expensive. You're an expensive broker, even if you never charge those clients because you cost them that deal, man. You should have known better. And that's what I don't like when they try to throw, throw deals onto once. You hope it sticks. You know what? 50-50, there's a 50% chance it works. And those brokers are just lucky, right? They just throw on, they throw on, the, I call it, you know, throw the sticky gum on the wall and see if it sticks, right? It's like going through many different lenders. You really are shopping the competition, oh my God, but the wrong way. Uh, you should know ahead of time. If it's a 50-50, how do I make it to 80 or 90%? Wouldn't that be a better idea, Robert? You, you right? got to put the client in, in position to succeed. Yes. That, that's your goal. Yeah. Once you burn, see, reputation is everything in the commercial finance world. It's a small world. We know each other, right? I know my I know my other guy, my colleagues. We know, right? We know what they're doing. And the thing is that once word gets out, oh God, Sue so sent me another deal. Oh God, Sue so sent me another deal. They know. They're going to put your, they put your file at the bottom before they get to it, right? By the time, it's too late, right? Something remove the date's gone, so it's too late. So you need to know so that if A, it protects your reputation and it protects the client's reputation as well as an expense that they may not be, you know, expecting, right? Don't waste the money. Right? That's how I tell my client, walk away before you do an environmental assessment. The way that it looks on this property looks bad, right? So save them five grand up front right then and there. And I show you how to do that. What about lenders? I got, I understand everything. I got the deal. Robert helped me with the, you know, the, the projection and everything. Strong file. Out of all the lenders, which is the best one to use? Or you can just try any one of them, right? There's no support out there uh, uh, other than our group, other than me, right? I, I tell you from the, from the amount of time that we've been in business, from the amount of files that we've gone through, right? And God, hundreds of clients we've helped out myself personally, right? For, for, for cost 130 odd brokers that I've trained, we're approaching probably several hundred, if not a thousand already or more, right? I should keep tabs on them, but I don't, I don't pull them. So know which lender to use. Credit union, trust, insurance company, sometimes they are good, right? Depends on your client, right? If they're currently a TD, should they go to TD or should they go elsewhere, right? And I give you a reason why you should and why you shouldn't, right? You need to know those. Then that's the best way to do it. Rather than just say, you know, I'm going to try all of them. It's like, yeah, how would you like it if they do that to you, right? There's oh, no nobody wants that. Yeah, there's no efficiency ratio. There's no there's no such thing as efficiency. That's another cool thing. No efficiency ratio inside the commercial world. But I call it a friend ratio. They become unfriend to you, unfriendly, if you keep shopping them, using them, but don't give them the deal, right? They don't like that. It was just human nature, right? So I show you how to cut down on that and be able to just pick two, three and uh, shop those guys. Eh? And they'll be okay with it as long as you tell them. That's another difference, right? You tell inside the broker channel, you tell you, you, you're also working with on the same file. You know what they can do to you, Robert? Yeah, cancel that deal. And if Sewell sent an idea next time, we're not, we're telling go to, go to <laughs> right? 
So, you know what? In the commercial world, I get to say this. And they're like, oh, thanks for letting us know. We're going to compete for this business. Inside of Broker China, it's the opposite. You're like, I call it enslavement, right? The efficiency ratio is making the Broker China less effective. You can't you can't do what you profess to do anymore. You cannot shop around anymore, right? I was because- talking to one of, one of the upper management at Phylogix and a new broker actually submitted a deal to every lender. Oh, jeez, perfect. The well, eight lenders submitted the deal and they reached out and told the the broker and they had a chat with their brokerage and you know beginners yeah. beginners mistakes yeah but it's not just any beginners mistake it's it's every one of them now because they're they're being you know hand, handcuffed you're handcuffed right with this efficiency ratio i don't know i call it unfair but that's the way business is so you know also what's not fair being paid 75 basis point on average on every deal or less or less yeah on, on a b deal right oh my gosh getting getting 50 basis point for all that work it's just and and not the easiest clients, a B client, right? My B clients pay me two, three and a basis points. I get them A rates. I get them A financing because the commercial finance world, guys, it's not all about the personal credit bureau file, <coughs> right? Yep. So what about results, right? Because at the end of the day, is Suicide sales a good game? I want to see proof, right? Robert Klein is one of my earliest, for like the second, the second batch that I that I taught. Read what he says for me, Robert. It's amazing. Well, I can't Robert pay for this. Robert Klein, I know Robert. Uh, sister's a broker as well. And exactly. uh, yeah, Robert Klein says, Sue has saved my life with this course. I'd still be a normal mortgage broker without it. Since 2016, the following has happened. He built a network for non-broker residential channel lenders. Uh, he built a network for commercial broker channel lenders. And he just, he had completed, I know, right around that time, his, uh, his real estate license. So he, he works predominantly with a commercial real estate um, developers. And yep. uh, he uses that to cross pollinate his business. Yep. Right. And uh, number four, he said he qualified for 9.2 million commercial mortgages to build 33,000 square foot residential rental space. You know, t- even at 200 bips on that one, that's <laughs> that's uh, a good even, income. Forget it. Forget it. Even, even one 100 basis point, <clears throat> if he, if, because he's involved actually in that project. Too, and in, in the bigger city. So I know Robert's in the Vancouver area here with us and uh, he's mapped out another 100 million plus in, yep. in uh, future business. Yeah. So all you got to do is run those numbers as a broker and see the value in the course. Yeah. Not even, not even 200 basis point. Even if you just charge a hundred basis point, 1%. By the way, I don't go below 1%. There's nothing below that. I don't work for that. Right. So even on a 300,000 market, I still make minimum of 2%. I, I usually say 3% unless they're returning client. Right. Same amount of work guys for 300K market is, you know, 60 to 60 to 90, right? Six. I, I don't work for, I don't work for less than $2,500. You know, to wake up for it, it ain't worth it. Hundred thousand alone is still twenty five hundred dollars for sure. Right? Yeah, work some smarter, people don't get out of harder. bed for less than that. Yeah, my my dad always says, right, work harder or work smarter. Uh, I prefer to work smarter. <laughs> right? So I I so, know a client. We flew to Toronto for a big uh, insurance uh, life insurance uh, deal on a corporate for a corporate client. He wanted to meet personally. Uh, that was worthwhile to jump on the plane. Why not? I would. Right? Because yeah. it, north of six figure. Uh, commission which, which is not negotiable in the life insurance industry but that client wanted to sit down he wanted to see things on paper he was old school he wasn't comfortable the first zoom call i, I recognize that but you're going to know your client you're going to know which ones are worthwhile getting out of bed for and you know a client wants us to run across town to pick up a t4 slip it doesn't happen yeah but a client calls you and says you know i, I got a two three million dollar a real estate deal I'm working on. Can you help on that? Well, now you'll be able to say yes. Indubitably. Yeah. Whereas before I said, uh, have you tried your bank? Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's something we don't work with here at our brokerage. Yeah. Well, I thought you guys were, a, you know, a national brand. I thought you had offices and, and infinite number of lenders. I thought you had, you know, a thousand brokers in your brokerage across Canada. Why can't yeah, you I help mean, with the commercial? I mean, you know what? They, they can, but they're limited because the head office have commercial desk. But here's the thing. The commercial desk doesn't incentivize you and also disincentivizes the residential mortgage broker. Here's why. When you send a deal to head office, they give you 25 basis points. They're like, okay, yeah. But then they also don't teach you anything. They don't keep you in the loop. They reply very late, many days, if not a week later. Your clients are sending you a message every day. Hey, what's the update? Hey, what's the update, Robert? Hey, what's the update? Every day. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Head office has I don't know. Question. It's happening in Toronto. Call Toronto. Well, that's it. Either in Toronto or Vancouver. That's the only two you know, places they, they send to the commercial lead desk, right? And they're swamped. They're inundated. And 
when if you're a commercial lead desk, do you pick the best deal to work on or the shitty deal or the smaller deal? Makes sense, right? I pick the best deal, the easiest deal to work with first. Hey, if you ask, uh, crap. I'll leave it for later. And that's how it is, right? So it's not, it's just a disincentive to send everything to the head office. And, and it's also when many people send to head office, it's also ineffective. It, it really, really causes chaos for them. It really puts a lot of pressure on them too. So it, be, it makes it worse for them. Head office doesn't want all these small dingy deals. Anything a million to $3 million, that should be us. The residential broker that have the knowledge that Robert has can deal with that. Two, three million dollar deal. Make the, you know, make the 20, 60 grand, whatever you want to charge. I help you show you how to charge, increase your fee, all right? I help you overcome all those objections that the clients have with fees. It's all part of the training, right? Look at Robert Klein. Did it change his life? All right? How about his way of doing business? He hated chasing first home buyer. <laughs> Or he doesn't do any of them anymore. All right, strictly commercial now with his commercial real estate license. Oh, by the way, guys, hint for you. How many commercial mortgage brokers out there are chasing commercial realtors? A better question. How many, how many residential brokers are chasing realtors? Too many. Hmm, too many. There's nobody chasing commercial realtors. They wouldn't have a clue how to start. <clears throat> and commercial realtors are a different breed. You can't just pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm so true. You don't know if you hole in the wall, uh, you know. But could you send me some referral? They know why you're calling them. <laughs> All right. You think they'll say yes or no or why want to meet with you? Sorry to tell you, but commercial realtors won't have the time to meet with you. They deal with big players and big and ballers, right? You need to earn their trust and you need to find a way to get in their face to be able to access them. And I teach you how to do that, right? Accessing commercial realtor is not easy as a residential re realtor, my friend. It's very different. They will not pick up the phone, even for an investor calling. It's crazy. Think about that. Look at the listing and you know a big difference. Commercial listing. I have nothing on it. You're not even a property tax. What the heck? Just an address and a picture and not a good picture either. All right. So there's a, there's a psychology behind that. But if you understand the psychology of a commercial realtor, easy picking. All right. Easy to access them. I know them. All right. Once you're in this industry, it's very easy. But those who aren't or don't understand, good luck in knocking on their doors. All right? So that's great at all. But how about this? It's not all about me making money, not all about you making money. Would this make a difference in your client's life? Look at what this guy just did. One of my past students, right? In, uh, in Toronto, I believe, right? Uh, no, no, actually in Vancouver, 778 number. The Blueberry Farm, you mission. Check it out. $2.4 million commercial mortgage on a 77 acre, right? So $2.4 million deals on a private mortgage. He converted, after he took my workshop, he went back to the existing client. This client of his that he put in, because he didn't know, he didn't know how to get this client a mortgage, a commercial mortgage. And he needed his client. And his client is far busy with 77 acre blueberry farm. He's got no time to shop around, no time to go to the bank, right? Got them institutional money, saved them from a 9%, nine, like 9% interest down to less than 3%. Would that change the client's life? Profit level, stress. Well, it's not just empowering brokers to, you know, squeeze more money in, into their paychecks. It's empowering brokers to really do what brokers love doing, and that's helping clients. Yeah, clients very happy with a huge savings interest, right? And another tool is just another tool in your toolbox, and, and now you're working on different size projects. Yeah, and go back to your existing client. The clients that are on the B lending, private lending, look at them from a different different perspective and reposition them to get the financing from an institutional lender. Just because you're in the broker channel, lender says no, right? The other guys might say yes, right? And the difference between inside the broker channel and at the branch level is very different. Small business lending can do it, whereas even the branch can't do it. Commercial account manager can probably do it or high net worth ones. And there, there's like five different channels, right? But broker channels only deal with one channel, maybe two sometimes. The other three, they have no access to it unless they are moved outside of the broker channel, right? That's what Gopinath did. Gopi got this. I know which bank too, right? <laughs> got the financing for them. And I told him specifically, go to talk to this lender. And I even gave him my, com my commercial contact. And that's part of the, the workshop. I have, I have a set of all the contacts that I've acquired over the past few years. Um, you have full access to them. You can always call all the contact information. I call my black book list of lender, right? That alone, my friend, is worth, worth the money, right? But you can call them and, and get referrals even if outside of the province.
right? Most of my contacts are on the West Coast, some are in Toronto. But if you're in the other province, all you do is pick up the phone, call my contact and say, hey, would you have somebody in Saskatchewan here that you can refer me to, right? So think about that. If you were to call them up directly from the bank, they don't know you from hole in the ground versus Mary said, Mary from Vancouver said that I should call you to help on this deal. Would that help? Way better, right? So if somebody from regional sales manager or some commercial senior commercial guy from Vancouver or Toronto refer you to their colleagues, in, you know, in the in, in the prairie or the East Coast, so much easier to get through that door, right? That's the benefit of leveraging my network. So I love making a difference in other people's life. And I love to see my students here make, make a difference in other people's life, right? And, and just to be time. open, just to be open. So I know you mentioned you get the odd deal referred back to you, but I, you know, I know you have known you for a long time now, and I know that your passion is really, you know, empowering people. Knowledge is power. We, we developed the tax Fine. course and we give it away for free, you know, and people say, well, why do you give it away for yeah. free? Well, yeah, there's a, there's a, you know, not, not a hidden motive, but people That's take right. the first modules for free. If they like it, they come on board. They learn a little bit and we're always looking for good people. Yep. You know, people start in the tax world like they do in the mortgage world. They start off learning the basics and that's a great framework to learn. But where do you go from there? Only one way to go and that's up. That's right. And even even beyond this, right, even beyond this, we're, we're developing with uh, some of my really good experts in, in my, even my colleagues, right? I call it the niche. The next level is development and construction financing, like for multifamily, for building out the low rise, high rise subdivision that workshop is is in the works right now so stay tuned right what else is there well here's a few other ones for you right what's the potential hey read this one from crystal for me robert read it can you crystal so uh crystal or mylene yeah um crystal fi final crystal approval know. closing industrial warehouse 1.7 million purchase price owner occupied for a plumbing company 85 percent ltv with additional 40,000 operating line of credit an additional 40k on top of that so thank you sue without your course and guidance this would only be just dream. be a dream so happy to have this experience and look forward to many more i know we've had a lot of uh, brokers that have gone through your course and come back through and work with us because it's a small circle out there yep. and we see the money they're making on the deals yep. it's a huge difference it's it's uh, like grant cardone says it's a 10x yeah you know, grant's grant's gonna send me a check for that i know but it's it's a tenfold <laughs> in income it's either one tenth of the work for 10 times the pay or 10 times the uh the paycheck for you and infinite value for the client well i mean look at this so let me ask you about the client that crystal has are they gonna shop around do they have even time to shop around they're, they're like they don't they're even like, know where to go yeah do they even know i mean talk about 85 percent loan device see most most uh the myth that commercial finance is, is maximum 75 percent it's just a myth you can get up to 100 percent financing i believe this one she hit close to 90 percent it was like 87 or 89 like close to 90 percent loan to value on this commercial industrial warehouse because we show you we teach you how to leverage the operating assets operating you know financial statements that robert brings up right that creates right so that we can get more additional money that 40 grand is definitely over, over 85 percent loan to buy right? what are you the clients thinking holy crap how did this what happen did, right with their cash flow would they have more cash flow definitely chances are this was for a referral from an accountant because usually accountants like Robert will, will get clients to say, hey, I want to expand, but I don't know how, to, I don't know how, Robert, I, we're, we're so maxed out. We need more space. Do you know anybody, right? Mm, let me think. Um, <laughs> let me right? think. Yeah. So, I mean, you have your own circle. You have your own accountant. If you don't, use Robert Stone, but a cheese, you know, for crying out loud. You don't need to chase realtor. H help out your accountant friends, right? Help, up, help them. They, they grow the business and Robert's business is going to grow too. So if they if they purchase this correctly and put it in a separate holding company, guess what Robert gets now? We get a new client out of it. Yeah. On the yeah, same we, we do these webinars. We bring on experts like Sua because it's a small community, but we see the deals happening. You know, Bicky uh, was using us initially before we partnered with Finastra, but Bicky was, uh, you know, in the lower mainland here in Vancouver, putting yep. deals through every week, scraping on, on the residential mortgages, <laughs> and then those deals started dropping off and we wonder what happened to him. Well, this is what happens. He starts doing bigger deals and Hey, we're not, we're not hurt. Yeah. We, we lose a client on, you know, we, we were charging $30 for notice of assessment orders. There's no yeah. money in that. No. You know, our money's on, on the other items that we do. We do insurance investments and we do corporate tax, but we saw a lot of uh, our mortgage broker clients like Bicky who took the course and then they started doing bigger deals Smaller volume, but bigger ticket prices. Yep. I mean, look at her. Mylene, I mean, one of her, her first 
1.595 million dollar commercial. She made 40 grand. That's like 200 basis points. Well, she put Bicky to share. Uh, B- Bicky to share in there, eh? <laughs> oh, Bicky's made a ton more. But oh, you know, I know, I know. I love these guys. I like that's 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 why I'm so proud. That's why I'm passionate. That's why I teach. Right? It's like amazing. You know, you just have to ask yourself why why are you winning? Right? When when, so when is it going to be time for you? Let's sum it up, Sue. So you know, we've been on for close to the hour here. People have learned what they can do, what they need to do. Let, let, how long is the course? How Six often do you long. run it? And how do they get signed up? Six weeks long. Like they can sign up at that commercialfinancingmastery.com or just email me. Let's have a call first. Let's have a chat first. Okay. Easy to set up a-, a Zoom call like this. We're recording this on Zoom. Sure. And oh, Sue is available. That? You got to watch out for the time zone though, because we had we had trouble, you know, lining this up. So <laughs> great, grateful to have you on. So six weeks on the course. How often do you run the course? How many students do you take per course? I don't usually take more than a handful of students because like my experience is that the last workshop that I did because of that uh, owner brought on six underwriter on top of my existing students. We had way too much. We had 16 total, like 10 was my, I was like, okay, that's 11 people. That's maximum. She goes, well, how about bringing my, my staff too? I'm going, how many? I wasn't expecting that. So I find that the bigger the bigger classroom, less people ch- talk. They're, they're intimidated from each other. I find that around five or six is what usually I, I cap it at, usually, unless there's, you know, they're bringing buddies with them to learn with together and underwriters to learn together. I'll make an exception, but I, I try to keep it smaller so that it, it's more open, right? One-on-one kind of thing, small, small group. I like big groups, you know, make more money, but it's not conducive, I find. You know, I'd rather spread over six weeks, you know, I take a month off. So every, every quarterly, I would do one. But because my project here is, is being built in, I'm building a resort, commercial resort project in Bali, Indonesia, guys. So if you, if, you want, if you want to see what's in the background here, it's just, I'm in Bali. So just for you know, <laughs> just building a resort project here, commercial one. You know, when you do a lot of commercial deals over time, Every now and then, an opportunity like this comes up, and you can become a part of it. And you know what? I'm like a 40% equity in this, so it's gonna be huge, right? Having six figure with a passive income while people enjoying my place is, is that's cool. That's gonna be an extra retirement hustle. <laughs> that's right? awesome. So commercialfinancingmastery.com. If you're looking for more details, Sua at commercialfinancingmastery.com. If you're watching this, uh, which most likely you are on the replay, you will get an email from the webinar replay with Sue's contact info. Uh, If not, reach out to us if you're just catching this or you don't have the audio and you're just uh, catching the video, you know, reach out to us. Maybe next time I'll put a calendar link. You can put a calendar link on here, but it's just calendly.com. We'll we'll do that because uh, these go up on YouTube. So if you're watching it on the YouTube channel through one of the replay links, Sua's info is in the link below. Uh, There will be a booking link for Sua in the link below as well. Sua from Indonesia, man. Thanks a million. And uh, that's two to 300 bips per million for coming on. (laughs) It is. It is. It's good money. That's all I got to (laughs) say. Okay, fine. We'll let you uh, finish off with the final words. One last plug on the course. uh, And then we'll see you next time. Yeah. You know what it is to me is mortgage broker. The definition, if you look at the definition of mortgage brokering, it does not say which lender to use, guys. Okay. Mortgage brokering, we are a conduit. The real definition of brokering is being able to help your clients in every capacity, whether it's an accounting, financing, either it's investment or insurances. We have access to all of that. Hey, if you're getting a client, a $3 million mortgage with Robert Stone, you think Robert will give you a nice pat on the back, right? And some greenbacks? I'm sure he would. So don't limit ourselves, guys. Like, don't limit ourselves to what, to where the money is going to come from, right? Expand, right? Don't think outside the box. I teach my broker, there is no box. You flatten the four corners, it's flat. That's the opportunity, right? So it's time to think differently. If you wanted to make more money, you want to, do, you want to spend more time with your, your, your friends and family, Travel around the world like me and do business at the same time and do the financing. It's possible. I've done it. It's Why it. Can't start you? building somebody else's dreams. Start building your own. Commercialfinancingmastery.com. We'll see everybody next week. Take care. Thanks a lot, Rob. 
suatrong.com uh, reach out to sua he's he's your resident expert on commercial uh, financing so let's see here if we can turn screen share on and we're going to go over to this other screen here here we go notice of objection very very straightforward uh form it's a one-page form and what entitles you to fill out this notice of objection is actually in the taxpayer's bill of rights number seven says that you're you don't have to pay tax amounts in dispute until you've had an impartial review. So how do you dispute a tax balance on a client's account? This simple form here, it goes to the chief of appeals at your tax center. There's five tax centers across Canada. Find out where your local one is. If not, it may take a little bit of extra time to get through, but we file these notices of objection online on the client's account. So if you didn't know, we're the national service provider for Phylogix. Now, the same way we log into a client's account to get their notices of assessment and their income slips for approvals for the lenders, we file this objection online through the client's rep ID account. And this gets put on their account usually within about 24 hours faster than if you wrote a check to Canada Revenue and mailed it. So within 24 hours, you can have that account balance removed from your client's account with CRA. It gets removed from the statement of account. We provide a new statement of account once the objections filed that you send that back to the lender. And now chances are you should be able to get an approval. They may want a letter or a, a copy of the objection to find out why the balance is being objected. But nine times out of 10, we are able to get these through for brokers. And what do we charge for this? We charge $100 just to file it. If we do go through and actually uh, work with the client to dispute, full dispute on the balance owing, then we can discuss that with the client for the fees. But just to get this file, to get the balance removed, $100. And the client can use that $100 as a credit towards other services. So, you know, we like to, to give to receive. Like my old boxing coach told me, he said, it's always better to give than to receive. So we, we like doing this uh, service because it helps brokers get their clients approved with as little as we've seen it mortgages being refused for as little as 150 dollars you know clients getting forced into a b line of lending or a secondary line of lending uh, for as little as you know 100 100 dollars on their account very simple you may be going for other financing not just a mortgage you know maybe a car loan we work with a lot of our auto dealerships on this as well to get these balances removed from clients accounts and sometimes we find balances that aren't even owing, you know, several cases of very large balances that were in error showing up on clients accounts. So it's worthwhile taking a second look. It's a simple notice of objection process and that form T400A E22. So they do have a revised form out this year. Uh, those dates and, and numbers are always on the bottom left of uh, Canada revenue forms. So what's, you know, let's, let's dive into your expertise a little bit. We bill ourselves as the side hustle for your side hustle, Canada's national mortgage affiliate program. You know, partnering with a national accounting firm for leads and affiliate payouts. Maybe explain that a little bit. And I know you're going to dive in with a little bit of a presentation here on the software that we use and how the back end works and how to get signed up. You know, maybe let's just start that process. How easy is, is it to get signed up from the homepage at Mr. Taxes? Yeah, it's, it's super simple. Attention Canadian taxpayers. So this is this is one of the pages that you'll have access to as an affiliate for the Dollar Tax Club if you decide to partner up with you know the, the program. And so the reason I want to share this page with you is because this page is just simply it's designed to not provide a whole lot of information. However, it is designed to provide enough information that is going to intrigue whoever's on this page enough to take the next step, okay? So the, the whole purpose, the whole psychology behind my job is to figure out how do we get people through the process as simply and smoothly as possible. So we give them enough information that intrigues them to want to take the next step. So they fill out their information, which I'm not gonna do right now, um, but I will show you what the next page after they fill that out is. So this page here explains the Dollar Tax Club and how it works and how the 10 year tax review works, which is one of the major hooks that we have here with this program, the, the 10 year tax review, just helping people one, get cleaned up on their CRA accounts and get all of that stuff cleaned up as well as see if there's anything that maybe they have potential refunds sitting there, um, which is one reason why somebody would want to go through this process, right? To see what might be there. So on the last page, I think it said, uh, yeah, there could be thousands of dollars waiting for you. 
right? So that's enough for somebody to be like, you know what, I'm going to check this out. So they come here, they watch this video, which Rob does a really good job of explaining how the dollar tax club works and all the benefits that you get out of it, including the tax preparation and, and all of that stuff, discounts and, and whatnot that they and offer. The tax, the tax review is the big hook. The tax review is the big hook for sure. That's what gets people in the door, right? So essentially, this is a really good thing for the reason we came up with this for mortgage brokers is because this could work for lead generation, right? Um, for example, let's say you you have 10 people that you send this to, it's $1 for them to check it out. What could happen in a, in a really good, perfect world is all 10 of those people go through this process. Dollar Tax Club and Mr. Taxes uh, helps get a refund back for those people from the CRA. They're really happy, obviously, because they just got money that they didn't even realize was sitting there. So what's going to happen is those people through those conversations and whatnot are going to be sent back to you as the referring affiliate to see if there's anything you can help with, help them with, right? Mortgages, uh, renewals, all of those kind of things. And so it just opens up that line of communication and kicks it off with a really good positive experience, right? So that's, that's my take on it. There's probably different angles that maybe if you're watching this and you're a mortgage broker, maybe you can think of other angles or, or other hooks, but that's my take on it. Not being a professional mortgage broker myself, that's kind of my perspective on it. So one of, one of the things, uh, Jess, is uh, mortgage brokers, you will have access to a link. And if a client clicks on that link, a potential client, so we create ads for brokers. We start you off with 10 ads with a QR code with your affiliate link. So if a client comes in, number one, you as a mortgage broker get paid on that referral. If the client ends up doing business with us. One of the first questions we ask them uh, when we go through a financial review with every client that comes through that wants to participate in it, we ask them if they own a home. You know, if they own a home, the next question is, who is your mortgage with? We get a copy of the mortgage statement, and then we share that information with you as the referral partner mortgage broker. So those, you can use us as potential lead generation, and we do compensate you for any leads that do come in. If we get paid for them, maybe they already have a mortgage broker, they're happy with them. You still get paid on that lead or that prospect if they end up doing business with us. And we pay out 20% on the referral. Maybe go just go to our homepage, Jesse, at mrtaxes.ca. And the middle button, the middle button on our homepage at mrtaxes.ca is very simple uh, just to get on our affiliate program as a mortgage broker. But we also have a direct link for mortgage brokers. So if you want to become an affiliate, just click on that middle button. And then what is it? I've just put a link also if you want to sign up directly as a mortgage broker in the chat area, but either link will work. Uh, if you have questions about it, pop them in the chat area. If you're on the call today as a mortgage broker, I, I know we have uh, quite a few here on this morning. If you have any questions, pop them in the chat area. So uh, between October and now, we've had 3,000 new signups. So it's 3,000 potential leads or mortgages just since we launched this program we have close to 100 affiliates signed up already and our goal by the end of tax season is to grow it to 100 we're going to cap it there with 40 mortgage brokers as affiliate partners on the uh, mortgage affiliate program and if you didn't tune in last week we had a special guest on last week uh, colin murray uh, from the mortgage group so our affiliates do get to come on as guests on the webinar as well the first three weeks of uh, every month, we bring on a mortgage broker. The last week or the last Wednesday of every month, we have somebody on from Phylogix. Uh, they're our partner now in Canada. Uh, so Phylogix, a uh, national broker channel operating under Finastra. Uh, we partnered with them last uh, just over a year now. So last April 2021. And we're processing 30,000 plus 30,000 plus mortgage uh, document requests a month. They do half a million mortgages a year. So we're, we're processing 30,000 plus. So that's probably about, uh, we're looking at 60% of clients that come through that don't have their tax documents. And that's that's what we do on the back end for PhiLogic. So if anybody's on PhiLogic, you know, let us know. If not, there is a link on our affiliate page to get a, a free account with PhiLogic to get set up and get your first NOA order free. So once they sign up for the affiliate program, Jesse, maybe, maybe let's just take a look in the back end to find out where somebody would get their affiliate link and maybe talk about some different ways they can use it. We've created ads with a QR code. 
but other ways that people can use their affiliate link. Yeah, so I'll walk through the process just a little bit. And so you'll be on this page, obviously. It's really simple. You click sign up as an affiliate. If you have a free Kartra account, so the whole program is run through the, uh, a company called Kartra. If you have a Kartra account already, maybe you've signed up as an affiliate for a different product through Kartra, then you would click sign in. If you have never created a Kartra account, you would click free sign up. So this doesn't cost you anything to become an affiliate. So you click free sign up and then you fill out this form, create free account. There's uh, five or six questions that you have to answer. They're really basic questions. And then what will happen is it'll create a Kartra account for you. And um, I'm just gonna, I don't know what I have in this one, but I'm gonna try it. I know this is just a free affiliate account that I had set up previously. So this is, yeah, these are all of my my personal company's uh, affiliate links, but this is what the back end will look like, okay? Um, in here, you'll actually have a dollar tax club. In this account, I don't have that one because I didn't sign up. This was a test thing for, for my own company. So you'll have dollar tax club right here. And these are essentially the products that you'll have access to. And then you can click my link right here. Don't choose your JV broker link. Don't worry about that one. Your affiliate link. And then you just copy the link that pops up here. And then what you can do is you copy that, paste it, send it to whoever, you know, whoever you want, put it on your website, do whatever you want to do. All of that stuff is tracked back to you. And it'll be um, either this page or a page very similar to this one that will be your affiliate link. So you don't have to do any coding. You don't have to do anything really. All you have to do is become an affiliate. You'll get your custom coded link and then everything is set up to be automated and tracked from the back end for you. So you don't, it's really hands off. Once you um, get that link and you start putting it places and have people going through the process, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about any of it. So Rob, did that kind of answer your question? Yeah. It, it did, Jesse. Thanks. And these pages are custom coded for each broker. So your affiliate link, you'll be able to share this page on social media. We create ads. Uh, I'm going to try and pull up a couple sample ads that we've done for a couple uh, brokers that are working with us on our affiliate program. And what what has happened with, with them, they, they've started getting leads in already. Uh, this month, uh, Colin's already had three leads come in. He's He's got applications from them. They're not all renewing. One was a new mortgage, so that he's working on that one right away. But two, uh, two additional ones that he's put in the queue for when their mortgages renew. And there's also the option of refinancing now. You know, financing options. You as a broker know all all the different options available to you in your suite of services. You know, and if you do have those options available, you could work with a client pretty much anytime. Take take a deeper look into the mortgage. And the beauty of this program is that if, if they're our client, if they sign up with us uh, for the tax review, they officially become a client of ours. We have access to, through the Rep ID account with CRA, through the a request uh, authorization with the client. We can share all the documents with you as a mortgage broker. We help put that entire package together. And a lot of brokers ask, what's in it for us? You know, it's for us, it is, let me go back to our slides here. There we go. Uh, tax joke of the day. But for us, what's in it for us? It'll come up in, in the next slide. Let's just uh, take a look here. So for mortgage brokers, referral commission, social media, website exposure, discounted services for your clients as well. Uh, but what's in it for us at the Dollar Tax Club is we're we're owned by Mr. Taxes.ca Inc. We also have a national insurance brokerage. So we look for insurance referrals coming back, client tax referrals coming back, and we try and keep the client within an ecosystem keep the fence around the client. And we can see as well, if a client is shopping around, we've had many instances where a client has applied for their documents through a broker through the Phylogix platform. And then another broker will come to us directly requesting documents for those clients. The way we've resolved this, Jesse, is uh, after April 30th, so May 1st this year, uh, we're working exclusively with Phylogix. Uh, we won't have any more document availability directly through us unless the client is already a paid client with us. Uh, then the client has the option. Of course, it's always the option of the client if they want their documents and who they want their documents to go to. But we won't be servicing any more order requests through our direct portal. 
It will all, all go through Phylogix after uh, April 30th this year. So there's a little bit about what's in it for mortgage brokers. Again, if there's mortgage brokers on the call today and you have questions, put them in. Feel free to reach out. If, uh, if you don't want the questions to be public here, reach out to us directly. We go back to this joke of the day. So what I claim for tax deductions and reflecting in the shower what I could have claimed. You don't know what you don't know, and that's probably close to the size of the Income Tax Act. You know, it's close to 4,000 pages now. How do you know what you can claim and what you can't claim, especially as somebody who's self-employed? One of the first things you get as a mortgage broker signing up with us for our affiliate program is a discount on your own tax return. There's still time. Uh, June 15th is the deadline for self-employed individuals. If you're incorporated, it's six months from year end. So if you have a December 31st year end, you have till June 30th to file your corporate tax. Those discounts apply to corporate returns as well. So as an affiliate with us, it's not just discounts for you, it's discounts for you and your clients. So it's a gift that doesn't stop giving. And it's on a service that we all need to do anyways. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to do it anyway, why not get a little bit of a, a break on it? It's like getting, you know, you're going out to Wendy's and you get coupons in the mail for Wendy's. What are you going to do? Leave those coupons at home? No, you're going to you're going to cash in. You're going to try something new maybe on that that's on the uh, coupons. And some people don't look at coupons, but my grandmother always told me when somebody offers you money, you just smile and put your hand out and uh, you thank them for it. Yeah, we used to go up and help my, our grandparents when they, when they were alive. Me and my brothers and my uncles used to fight over who was going to cut the grass every Saturday morning or shovel the driveway. So we used to go up and help when they were getting older. My grandmother always tried to give us a little bit of money, you know, for helping. And we we're like, no, no, no. There was a reason why we didn't want to take the money, but, you know, just pride number one, but my grandmother used to roll the money up and stick it in, in between, uh, you know, where in her, her top. And she, that's where she used to hide uh, her money. And uh, I told uh, our daughter that last week and, and she laughed and she said, granny, who is, uh, you know, my grandmother's her great grandmother, but she said, granny sticks her phone in there. And she's like, Ooh, I don't want to talk on the phone now, <laughs> but somebody offers you something. You just smile graciously and uh, accept it. So here's dollar tax club. If you put forward slash, we put a, uh, something in the chat forward slash mortgage under dollar after dollar tax club.ca. It's a direct link to the mortgage affiliate program. But either way, if you come on board as a mortgage broker, we'll reach out to you and get you set up with the program. So some of our tax saving strategies strategies is to uh, have tax reduced at source uh, and have it go into a TFSA account. Why not have your money grow for you all year? Why pay additional source deductions as an employee to Canada Revenue all year uh, when you get zero interest on that money? Uh, we just did this for a client. They were looking at a uh, corporate owned insurance policy. Uh, they were trying to find a way to come up with an extra 500 bucks a month. They're both in the $70,000 income range. Uh, we had uh, $500 reduced at source for each of them per month by filling out the requisite form, sending it to their payroll departments. And uh, they have an additional $12,000 a year cash flow now. Half of that they're using to fund the insurance policy. Uh, half of that they're putting additional um, deposits into the insurance policy and they can use that money at the end of the year to pay additional tax if they have to. But it's your money. Use it your way, the way you want to use it. Mortgage brokers have tips and tricks on, you know, financing on how, you know, the, the time value of money, etc. This is just one of them that we use on our side. And we look at every avenue available to a client to minimize their tax and maximize their wealth. That's our number one goal. Anything else, Jesse, on the affiliate program? Um, well, I mean, if we have time and we need to fill it, then I could always do a walkthrough of the actual Dollar Tax Club membership and just show a little bit of that. Okay. One of the things that uh, potential clients do get when they sign up, any new client that comes on board with us, and uh, we're deferring these now till after tax season because we are so busy, is a comprehensive uh, financial review. So we do a 101 point checklist on a client's tax situation. We can go back 12 years online through their CRA rep ID account. Uh, so we get access in there, temporary access. If the client doesn't want to work with us after, they cancel the access and they go back to working who they were working with. But nine times out of 10, we find something on a client's return. And that's just one of the things we, we give. So up to you, Jesse, if you want to go for it, share the screen again. So this is, this is the actual Dollar Tax Club members area. So this is something that everybody will get access to, whether whoever purchases Dollar Tax Club for a dollar, um, this is what you get for it. And this is how simple we've made it. You know, we've got uh, Facebook groups that you can jump into, follow us on social media, obviously. Um, but then 10-year tax review. So this is what Rob was just talking about 
with uh, going through the 101 point checklist. And um, so we've got it broken down into steps. Click the yellow button to fill out your 10 year tax review document. So that would be this, you know, they need a little bit of information in order to do that from the from the client. Um, step two, schedule a time in our calendar, right? We need we obviously once they go through it, they need to have a conversation with the person. So what you would do is um, just come down here, book a book a call um, with the team. And then from there, you meet with the team and they will have some answers for you by that point or for your client or whoever's going through this this process. They'll have some answers. They'll have done some digging. They'll know a little bit more about the custom situation and they'll be able to provide those answers and provide those next steps. So this works for personal review, corporate review. Um, obviously, you just click the ones that are um, for you. And then also in here, there is some- hey Jesse, yeah. just one, one thing to add there. Uh, for mortgage brokers, if you refer your clients here, one of the things that we do do with every client, once we do the review, we send back a complete download of every document document on the client's account, CRA. So it has a 12 year history, notices of assessment, income slips, RSP contributions, TFSA contributions, et cetera. Every document that the client has on their CRA account, and it's estimated over 50% of Canadians do not have access to their CRA account. And it's evidence with Phylogix with over 50% of the orders that go through Phylogix get diverted to us to obtain those documents for clients. So they're missing one or more documents and over 50% of the half million mortgages that go through their platform every year. So that's how valuable this service is for you as a broker, because you'd hate to get to the 11th hour and the client says, well, I'll get my documents, get my documents. They try three or four times to log into CRA and then their CRA account is locked. Now, that's another service that we have. We, we can help your clients get logged into their own CRA account. Again, they have to sign authorizations forms with us, but if they go through this process here, that's all taken care of. And then your clients will have a, a complete uh, pristine uh, set of documents that you can use to send to the lender. Uh, every document you could ever think of. If you, if you want to try and stump us on some of the document requests, put them in the chat area. Yeah. So plenty of different things that, you know, can happen through this process, obviously. And each situation is going to be custom to the client, obviously. But the number one goal is to just serve people and help them get their their finances their taxes in order as well as get their mortgages in order their insurance in order and just get you know help them clean up all of that stuff so that they can move forward and, and essentially build their wealth so once they go through there there's also uh, i saw there on if you go back jesse underneath the insurance tab is uh ctp training so we do have a course that we offer we offer the first four modules for free on a personal tax preparation course so if clients are wanting to do it themselves uh, uh, not a problem. This course is registered with Human Resource Development Canada. We developed it 12 years ago. It's updated every year, uh, updated with the current tax codes and forms. And clients, uh, your clients can go through here. You're able to go through here as a mortgage broker as well if you're interested in doing tax as a side hustle. Uh, I wouldn't wish tax upon anyone, but uh, that you know that's just the way it goes. But uh, this course is complimentary. The first four modules are for free. If you want to go through the full certification as well, there's a discount for you inside the Dollar Tax Club. Yeah, plenty of different opportunities in here. I mean, once you get in here, just start going through all of the, the stuff and see what resonates for you. And definitely make sure you do your 10-year tax review. That is that is a must. And then, and then a lot of people that are our members uh, do jump on the calls here every week. And who knows, they could be looking for a mortgage broker. If you're on the call and you happen to intercept somebody, so be it. You know, we asked everybody at the dating there to put your, your contact info in the chat area because we do get a lot of uh, listeners coming on these calls every week that are looking for a mortgage broker. If they bypass us and just want to do it discreetly, uh, by all means, you may pick, pick that person up as a client. And you're welcome to come on here. And uh, that's what these calls are for every Wednesday. Give you a little bit of education, a little bit of humor, a little bit of Jesse and Rob, uh, our special guests. Uh, at the end of every month, the last Wednesday of every month, we have uh, guests from Phylogix. At the end of this month, they're going to come on with a product demo. Uh, they have quite a few new uh, features in the back end. One of the, the main ones they're adding is a direct link to our additional services on the NOA um, order page. There, there will be a direct link to all the additional services that we offer. And uh, most importantly, our affiliate program. So our affiliate program, we've got the first two brokers signed up. We're only taking on 38 more for the beta program, uh, which will run for the first six months. So that will you know, probably go through most of our client list and all 
new leads that are coming on board. So if you're a broker and you're listening in, let me just put that in the chat area again. Uh, it is in there, dollartaskclub.ca forward slash mortgage. Absolutely free to sign up, uh, kick the tires, get signed up uh, while we'll, we'll those spots are still available and ask your questions, you know, find out what's in it for you, what's in it for us and what's in it most importantly for your clients. You know, what are they going to benefit from this and potential clients, leads. I'm going to try and cue the uh, slides back up. Yeah, um, I mean, that that's kind of the... That's the process explained in a nutshell. q and I know we have uh, some brokers on this morning. So if you have questions, now's your time to uh, get them into the chat area that it's over on the right hand side. Just click the chat button at the bottom. Type in your questions. Anything we might have missed today, Jesse? I know we missed Sua on that commercial financing, but we'll have his his uh, interview. We'll get that inserted for the replays on YouTube. I think that is uh, the only thing we missed. Yeah, well, there, there's always something. There's always something. What's, you know, there's always uh, software, there's technology. You know, I thought, you know, why why not just scrap technology and go door knocking? I, I came up with that idea about two years ago when COVID hit. So that knocked that idea out of the, you know, out of the park. But with the restrictions being released, you know, if you if you do what they call a walk or an area in your neighborhood, I know in our neighborhood here by 22nd Ave in New Westminster by 22nd Skytrain Station, you can look it up. There's about a two kilometer radius with about 1,500 homes. And the same realtors, uh, same mortgage brokers hit that area every month with something. I know uh, every year the, the one uh, realtor drops off pumpkins at every house. They drive around with a truck full of pumpkins and they drop them off at every house. And he puts his, his uh, sign on the his little flag on the top with his name and everything. And another one uh, drops off little flags, uh, Canadian flags on Canada Day. At the end of every driveway, they, they have kids go around, tap them in. They, so it's put a pencil sized stick with a little flag on it with his information on the back with a Canadian flag. I mean, nice little touch on marketing. You can go online, full-blown Kartra funnel. Talk to Jesse if you're looking for funnel systems. Um, there's different marketing funnel software, but why not go old school? I mean, you knock on a door, you know that somebody either has a mortgage or they need a mortgage or they need financing or they could use financing. So you're batting a thousand just by knocking on the door. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of different ways and the old tested proven models like that. I mean, they worked for so long for a reason. Um, over the last decade or so, they've started to fade out a little bit, but I have noticed that um, some people are, are bringing them back uh, because there is a, a personal touch emotion that does come from something like that too, right? Where you get to see the person, meet them in physical form, right? It's not this over a screen, over a Zoom conference or anything like that. So there is definitely that side of it that um, could work in your benefit if you're if you're willing to do that. Yeah, and then there, you know, the uh, who are the guys that ring the bells at Christmas outside the Safeway Salvation Army? Yeah, yeah, the kettlebells and uh, different ways of you know recruiting, you know, generating leads, etc. Um, you know, do what works for you. For us, uh, we've embraced the online marketing, the marketing funnel. We use Kartra as our software in the back end, but there's Click Funnels, Infusionsoft, um, Zoho. There, there's hundreds of online software, but find something that works for you, tap into it. Uh, the nice thing about our program is we have it all solved for you. All you got to do is reach out to us as a mortgage broker and we get an affiliate program all set up. Again, we're only taking on 40 brokers. We got the first two signed up last week. And uh, we, we know that uh, once we send out our email to our 10,000 plus list of mortgage brokers that those spots are going to disappear fast. So if you're on today, reach out to us. Uh, we, we have your contact, those that are on the call today, you'll get something in the automated email that comes out after. Take a look at the take a look at the affiliate program. Easiest way to get signed up for free, and I'll post this in the chat area again, is that link that's in the chat area. Go to that link, sign up, and somebody will reach out to you and, and tell you all about it. Okay, coming up, well, not quite on the hour, but uh, we're close enough. Uh, Quentin and Bonnie coming on next week from Legendary Marketer. Uh, what do you got in your back pocket for next week, Jesse? Any surprises? No surprises that I want to make note of. However, next week, the uh, the special guests that we have coming on are in my niche as well. So I'm sure we will have plenty to talk about. Yeah, lots of uh, marketing ideas for you as a broker. Uh, so tune in uh, next week. Here we go. Uh, what are we going to end it off with? The outro video, the intro outro video. And that's it on the side hustle for your side hustle with the Dollar Task Club. 
Jesse Garnier with Next Level Marketing and uh, yours truly, Robert Stone from Dollar Task Club. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>